It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. Hello everyone, my name is Tyrone Lowe, host, owner, and producer of my show, The Legends. And in the house of The Legends, we have the legendary, and I mean legendary, Lilo Thomas. What's going on, Lilo? Hey, Tyrone, how's it going? I'm, I'm it's just going having... great, man. Um, welcome to The Legends. Hey, um, thank, you. thank you for having me. So, you know, we want to take it from the top, man, from when you actually started singing. And I know that you're a Brooklyn Knight, and so am I. Uh -huh. You know, so um, let's talk about the beginning when you actually encountered the craft of really wanting to sing. Wow. I don't I don't ever remember not singing, but I, I you know, my dad was a, a preacher and uh, we were I was brought up in um, Brownsville. Okay. And he had his own church. So we, me and my sister, Venus, used to open up his sermons. Right. And, uh, but he, he wasn't really uh, big on us doing any kind of secular music or anything like that. That was my mom. My mom introduced me to, you know, artists like Sam Cooke, Jackie Wilson, you know, uh, Curtis Mayfield. And I think that's when it really, you know, the, the, the bug of, wow, I, I think I want to do this hit me. You know, just hearing that kind of stuff because it was just gospel music, right? You know, that, and um, so it basically came from my my mom just, you know, turning me on to that music and watching how she would just be so involved and emotionally, you know, with that music. I was like, wow, I, I would like to do that to people, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think the bug came in from that, you know. So we're talking about sacrificial things in life and stepping out on faith. The Olympics, I, you actually gave that up for a music career. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I love to run, and I I, I ran track in um, high school. I I actually in junior high school, my school actually went up to the uh, ninth grade. So um, there was a a, a cop that used to see me run because I had to drop my sisters off at school on one part of town and I would run to my school, PS 144, to uh, catch the doors before they would close at nine o'clock. Right. And we had a cop out there named Jerry and he basically said, hey, why don't you, you know, join the track team? I see you running in here. And I, I really wasn't interested in being on the team. I didn't know anything about that. But um, I was um, failing in my home period class because I would always get there a little late. And they told me that I, I would run this field day that I could, you know, get some credits. So I was like, OK, I'll do that. And I ran the 100 yard dash and I ran nine nine with flats on. So it, it, it basically started from that. They're like, oh, my God, how did you, you know, if you, <laughs> train, <laughs> if you was to train, what, what would you do? You know, so I just started, you know, getting into the, you know, feeling with, with track and, and, and what being on a team was about. and. I just started running from there and I, I set a world's record when I was like, you know, at, at 16 and I ran 20.8. I I was in, invited to the pin relay special 100 yard event. You know, I, I ran that. I took third. And, um, you know, I just I just used to love to run. So your music career from there, how did that actually start to apply in your life as far as crossing over to doing professional recording? Well, it, it basically, I, I also, um, I went to, I had an art scholarship to Parsons School of Design. And I, I studied art for like three years because people always say, well, you, need, you should find something else to do just in case things don't work out for you. I always enjoyed music and, and being in bands and uh, I decided, okay, well, let me now leave school 
and uh, start to pursue. I gave myself a year to pursue music. And uh, it happened just um, one day I was out at this, uh, it was an event and I ran into Kashif. And I knew Kashif from the neighborhood and, um, but, but I, I never, we never met. I just knew of him because he mm -hmm. used to be in the, this is before he, he, he got big. He was, he used to right. be with BT Express. Right. And, you know, they were like a local kind of band. In, in with the Randy Muller and the rest of those guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, but then one day, um, Kashif, uh, got with a production company, the Mighty M Production. And I ran into him again and we introduced. And he says, hey, I, I heard about you. I would like for you to come down and do a session for me. And it, and it happened to be a Melba Moore session. It was a right. um, Peach Melba album. And I said, okay. And that was the first time I was ever in the studio professionally. And, you know, then um, from that point, I, I, I started to write a song for Melba because they needed more songs. So I wrote the song Mind Up Tonight. And um, from that point, that uh, Hush Productions then asked me, would I like to do my own deal? Because Capitol Records was liking, you know, what I did for Melba. Right. And it basically, I, I signed with that and it started from there. You know, it's very profound, man, because um, you song backup for like George Benson and various yeah. other artists as well. Could, would yeah. you like to uh, tell the viewers about that? Yeah, that was a part of uh, Kashif, you know, because Kashif, uh, he wrote this song, uh, Inside Love, for George Benson. And uh, he asked me to come down and do that session for him. I did a lot of vocals for Kashif's first couple of albums as well. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people, when they hear my stuff, say, Is, was that Kashif? I'm like, no. Because <laughs> Kashif actually never produced anything for me. He was just right. too, too busy. I worked with uh, Paul Lawrence Jones. Mm -hmm. And... um. A lot of people used to get that confused, but I said, no, you're probably getting confused because you're hearing me on Kashif, mm -hmm. you know? So they didn't know they were hearing me when they were listening to Kashif. Right. Uh, I, you know, so, but he never produced anything for me. And um, so it basically was just uh, me and Paul Lawrence Jones producing and Paul was producing and I was doing some writing and stuff for the records. Okay. Yeah. So um, compared to back then to now, Let's talk about the transition. You know, as far as the time, you know, time now, uh, it has changed since then. You know, oh, so um, what the the atmosphere of the music, the, the, the atmospheric condition of the whole industry. Oh my goodness, yes. It, you know, it it normally changes like every five years. Right. But um, I I think when it it went more into like the first, it was like the the hip hop stuff. And I, which I always thought was very interesting, mm -hmm. and 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 I I I I didn't know if I could really do hip hop stuff, but you know I I always enjoyed the music, right? But the business has just changed so much, you right? Know, with, and then the internet came in, and I think that started leveling the playing ground, because now you could do a lot of your you know your music and get it out, you know, not on the level of if you were dealing with the record company. Right. But you could certainly do music the way you wanted to do it and, and get it out. Okay. And but with the record company, they was always um, stopping you from really, you know, being the artist you wanted to be. They they saw something and that's what they wanted you to stick with. Right. And, and it's just so many other things you could do that people would never know about because, you know, and I mean, I get the, the theory of it, you know, you, you want to stay consistent with it, but there's, there's other things that I would really like to do. Like I wanted to do something. Remember the artist, um, Julio Iglesias. Yes. I, I wrote a song that I felt Julio Iglesias would have been great with singing with, mm -hmm. but they, they didn't see that, you know? So they was like, no, stay in there, you know, stay in, in, in what you do. And I mean, and, for that same thing, I had to actually even fight, you know, for my real name, Lilo. You wow. Know, they didn't That's think impressive. people. Yeah, they didn't think people would remember Lilo. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if they remember Kashif, they should be able to remember Lilo. Okay. And they wanted to, they wanted to name me Leroy. And it was a big fight over that. I was like, I, I'm just not feeling being named Lilo. This is my 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 mother gave me this name. Right. My mother actually pronounces it. 
pronounced it uh, Lilo, but you know, Lilo is what stuck, you know, so I, I, I wasn't gonna let them do that. So the companies, they always had a, a way they wanted you to be presented and you were constantly fighting that. So now, you know, on your own now, you know, it's, I, I find that, you know, I get a little more freedom to be who I wanna be. And it, it just seems to be working out a little better. Okay. Have you feel since then the marketing strategy has it changed a lot as far as um, finances or, or promotion, you know, things yeah. like that? Yeah, promote, you know, I mean, it, it's good and bad because when I was with Capital, they didn't, my first um, album was, wasn't on a CD because they got into the CD game late. Exactly. Okay. You know, so I think it was my first two didn't really, uh, never was on CD until I actually, you know, took it over. But um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's changed for the, for the, for the better. And, you know, but the record companies, it's harder now as an independent to basically do radio. You know, I find, I don't know what that is. I really think that they should, you know, um, work in where if you're an independent artist and you've had music out before, there should be something about being able to get your music played on the radio. Okay. You know, I, but I don't know. They got to work that out. But as an independent, I, I, I guess it's just more of the freedom and, and how you, you know, promote your stuff mm -hmm. is just how creative you can get with making it happen, you know, like for, be, or like for instance, being on your show. I think it's a great thing that you are bringing in older artists that are still out there doing what they do mm -hmm. and, and you know, giving them a platform. That's right. a great thing. And I think we need more people like you to make that kind of thing happen. Okay. Well, thank you for that, man. I appreciate that, man. My thing is like I always say, man, I believe that people need to be heard you know, and to be able to express themselves. And yeah. the only way that you can really get to really get to know an artist is to know his background and, yeah. and with his whereabouts and, and what he's gonna, you know, actually come with next. And yeah. with that, you know, um, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be back with the legendary Lilo, Brent, Lilo Thomas. For the love of house, the dynamic the soul sounds of for the love DJ of Tyrone. No. Yeah. Let me 
to make sure your people are partying. All I want to do is just bring joy to the dance floor and watch people dance. <laughs> Tino, 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 Tino. Hey, Lilo, we're back. Hey. <laughs> Man, that song takes me back, you oh. know. <laughs> you know, and uh, she was a good girl. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> So, um, do you still stay in contact with Melba, and you know, do you you guys still communicate? Yeah, I run into Melba at you know different events and stuff. Right. Sometimes I'll just go out and if she's doing a show somewhere and check her out, you know. So we we stay in, in close touch. Okay. So, yeah. what has Lilo Thomas been up to these days? You know, oh, besides man. just actually production, you know, things like that. Um. Well, basically, just keeping busy. You know, you're locked in the house. So you got to find things to do. You know, I, I put up a little gym in my house. So I, I do some working out and, you know, then I'll go into the studio and do a little stuff here. I got a studio at the house and, you know, just try to keep your brain occupied. I'm, I'm trying to teach myself how to mix mm -hmm. my own music. Not that I want to mix it too, but I, I just would, I just really would like to know how it, how all that comes together. Right. And, you know, just, uh, Shoveling the snow because I get a lot of snow up here. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, you know, doing reading. I'm doing, you know, reading a few books, and you know, just just keeping the brain occupied. You know, there's a lot of uh, upcoming artists that's getting get into that's into the game now, and mm -hmm. through your expertise and your experiences, can you give them any type of suggestions about the craft? you know, the do's and the don'ts, the encouragements, the discouragements, you know, things like that? Yeah, I I just always believe that you should, you know, understand that this is a business. You know, I've fortunately, when I came into it, I wasn't directly signed to Capitol Records. I was in what they called back in the day, sort of like a glorified record deal kind of thing, which, you, you know, I guess you could look at as a, a more of a production deal. Right. And it's just really understanding, you know, how the business works and how you make your money. And and because that's so important, you know, mm -hmm. because I one of my biggest problems was the deal I was in, capital was distributing. I had my own budgets to create the music, mm -hmm. but I had to go in and fight in order to get more product pressed. Because under that deal, you know, it was like, you know, okay, we'll do, you know, 300,000 units. And then I would blow out of that in, in like two or three weeks. And it was like, okay, let's just do another record. When you should have been, you know, investing into more, more of it, of the production, exactly. yeah. Exactly. But, you know, you, the next album, you got a little more because of what you sold. And... And by the time I got to the Lilo album, I had been selling, you know, pretty big records. But I think, you know, at, it shouldn't have been that way. I think the the first record should once it started proving itself to a certain point, I think it should have been pushed more and pressed up more. And just you know, understanding where you are, I think it's it's important to to remain humble in what you do because it it, it doesn't make you special because you do this. This is what. I'm blessed that, you know, people have, you know, bought my records and they're still buying my records. I put out a greatest hits and my greatest mm -hmm. hits are doing well. So, you know, I think it's just very important to to be humble and understand that you're doing this, you know, for people and they, they love you for it. And, and right. you know, a lot of responsibility comes from that, you know, right. I'm, 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 I'm just thrilled people still buy my music. So let's talk about your new single, Drinking. I mean, yes. how did that come? How did that come about? <laughs> and by the way, that's his new single. So whenever you guys see it, 
support him, buy it. And I'm sure that is on all platforms right now. So Yeah, it's um, on the Spotify and all that. Drinking basically came from, there was a, um, an, an ex-girlfriend of mine. You know, that she, she, was, she was just kind of uh, nuts, I thought. But I didn't know that <laughs> it, basically, <laughs> it basically came from, because she always, you know, was you know, was drinking and she was, I, I just didn't understand it as a kid. I'm like, what? Right. But these personalities, she, it would be one thing and next thing you know, a lot of damage would be done here. And I'm like, I oh. call them, I call them being civil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I just couldn't understand it. And as I got older, you know, I just started thinking about it and I see how people can go out and they, they, they you know, they get drinking and I see some of the same girls like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm going to talk about this. You know, and and I just wanted to put it into a song. So, so that's okay. how it basically came about. <laughs> that's that's very impressive, you know, when you can take some of life's experiences and put them in a song to express Absolutely. your point. You know, um, yeah, you have everything I write. It, it's some somewhere in there. It, it, I was I was a part of it. You know, because okay. I I think it's so important. You'd be surprised how many people, you know, they 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 think like you. They they. They they understand it when you when you're keeping it real with them, and, and it's like wow, I, that's what I felt. I didn't quite know how to say it, but yeah, that's that's what I felt. You know, mm -hmm. I always try to touch that. You know, uh, let me ask you a question, Lilo. Um, you know, I almost said Lilo Brown because I was Lilo watching Brown. the movie Is there earlier. Lilo Brown out there. <laughs> I was. It's a, it's a character in a movie. You know what I mean. So, oh, oh, okay. excuse me if I mispronounce your name oh, slightly. No. I didn't really cool. say it, but I caught myself. I, just, I thought you thought I was James Brown's son. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took it as. <laughs> um, um, let's talk. Let's talk about some of the places that you've actually um, did performances at, and uh, what do you think through your whole career was actually your highlight as far as your performances. Wow, I've toured uh, Brazil. We did uh, London, Belgium. I think the highlight was my first time to London. I played this place called the Hammersmith Odeon. I didn't even at the time know that my music was there. I just that I was touring here in the States a lot and I wanted to do something different because I had just gotten off the Eddie Murphy tour. And um, I said, I want, to, I want to do something different. I want to go somewhere and, and just something totally different. So we picked London. And um, we went to London. We booked this place, the Hammersmith Odeon. One, one show, because I didn't even know if anybody was going to show up. Mm -hmm. And um, we got there, and I was so nervous. And I was rehearsing my band and rehearsing my band. And then I heard the ticket sales was, was good. And I said, OK, we, we, we could probably you know, come to this place more often. And the night of the show, it went off great. I had an amazing time and they asked me to stay. They booked four more shows after that. And I was blown away. I didn't even know that my music was in London. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it was back then it was where they had the, um, like the pirate stations and stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. So all my music was going in kind of underground and uh, it just blew up from that. And then I got on their capital, um, radio show, I was, uh, a Sexy Girl was number two. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it was, um, what's his name? Um, uh, the, the the My Way guy. Frank Sinatra was number one. Okay. <laughs> you know? And uh, it, that was that was just a great experience for me that, that I was, I was booked all through London after that. Okay. Is drinking just a single that you're putting out now, but are you putting out a full fledged CD as well? Drinking happened. To, I was drinking was the first single drop from the new music that I was doing. Okay. And I had it out for about three or four weeks. And then the pandemic happened. Right. I had started, I was starting a promotion down in, um, in, uh, the South. It okay. was in, uh, and, um, or everything that, that all of a sudden it's like the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. and I had to like stop doing the, the promotion. I, I was setting up, you know, working down there. I wanted to go into smaller markets, and then, you know, gradually break into bigger markets. And the, this uh, the, the the Rona came in and it stopped all those plans. Well, it did it to everybody, man. 
But unfortunately, we have to wrap this up. And I enjoyed the show, you know. Yeah, and too. um and thank we you. Going, again. This is a great thing that you you do. Yeah. Here. Well, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, man. And um before we leave the show, we're also going to get to listen to his new single, Drinking, you know. So don't drink because <laughs> you listen to it now. Enjoy yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And go out and support Lilo Thomas on everything that he might be bringing forth in the future. You know, God bless you and God speed with you as well. This is another Tyrone Low T. Low production. And this is the show, The Legends. And we thank Lilo Thomas for being part of the show today. Thanks a lot, my brother. Thank you, Tyrone. Okay. It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. My assignment, my calling is to inspire, uplift. You have to make sure your people are partying. All I want to do is just bring joy to the dance floor and watch people dance. T no, T no, T no, T no.